Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Phil's Literary Works, LLC, I want to welcome you to the stage reading of the play, Redemption or When Love Conquered Hate, written, produced, and directed by Philip W. Weiss. This play is about a Holocaust survivor who has to make difficult decisions when placed in charge of his former enemies. There will be a brief intermission after scene one. Before we start, I ask that you please turn off all your electronic devices, including recording devices and cell phones. Also, please refrain from taking photographs during the performance. Thank you. I will now introduce the cast. Stephen Ackerman. Ilona Castro. Eugene Dimitriev. Keith McHugh. Michelle Miguel, Laura Pelicia, Warren Weiss, and my name is Sarah Gergich. I hope you enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The following is a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But the slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, have patience with me, I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what he owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have, mer have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Scene one, time, late 1942, plays the Warsaw Ghetto. Setting, a waiting room in a medical dispensary for SS personnel. Three SS guards wearing their uniforms are sitting in the room waiting to see a doctor. Two are in their early 20s, the third one in his early 30s. They are malingering. So, Fritz, how are things? Not so good, Hans. I've been feeling under the weather the last week. And you? Oh, I got a letter from my girl back home. She says that Cologne was completely destroyed. Why, that's lousy, Brit. If I ever get my hands on one of those limeys, I'll tear their heart out. Bunch of stinking terrorists. Eric, aren't you from Cologne? No, I'm from up north, near Cuxhaven. Well, I'm from Cologne. I spent a summer in Cuxhaven when I was a kid. We had a lot of fun. You know, I like going to the beach. Yeah. That's in the past now. Here I am stuck in this cesspool, guarding these disgusting, thieving, degenerate Jews. It's better than being on the front. What would you know about the front? I was injured on the front. I served in France. France was a cakewalk. Compared to Russia, one thing about those Ruskies, they're brutes. Well, that's not surprising. They're subhuman. You really believe that? <laughs> not only do I believe it, I witness it firsthand. After we kicked their butts in Kiev, I was assigned to guard a bunch of them at this PLW camp. Boy, were they disgusting. They smelled to high heaven, wouldn't even bathe, fought like animals for food, could barely talk. 
Maybe that's because we weren't treating them right. Hey, says you. But right, smartass. Says you. The uncivilized brutes who understand only one thing. Brute force. Has it ever occurred to you two gentlemen that maybe we may not win this war? Screw you. You must be drunk. You better can that kind of talk, Fritz. Eric. I don't know what's gotten into you, but that kind of defeatist crap can get us all into deep water. Have you been talking to the Jews, huh? Hmm. I know you have a real soft spot for them. Why don't you shut up? I don't coddle any Jews, and you know it. Hey, we're fighting the three biggest countries on this planet, and if we don't watch it, we could find ourselves behind the eight ball before we know it. Yes, Anak. I lived in America for five years, and let me tell you, what I saw there did not impress me. Don't underestimate the Americans. The Americans are a bunch of mixed race rabble who have been ruined by the Jews. And when they rise up, they'll come over to our side faster than you can down a glass of schnapps. You don't cuddle Jews? That's not what I saw you caught with Jews smuggling food. What do you mean? I kicked his butt and told him to get lost. What's wrong with that? I saw it too. Frankly, I was not impressed. You let him off too easily. I gave him a good whacking and sent him on his way. He learned his lesson. What was I supposed to do? Shoot him? You said it, pal. Shoot him. If it were me, I would have shot that bastard straight away. Really? You would have shot the guy? Of course. He was stealing and breaking the law. Don't you think that's a bit extreme? For a Jew? Not at all. The degenerates, the scum of the earth, the reason we are in this godforsaken place and the cause of every cursed problem on this planet. I agree with Fritz. Once we show a Jew a little mercy, he'll take advantage of it to the hilt. And then when he can, he'll turn on you, just like they did in 1918. I wasn't even born then, so I wouldn't know. Didn't you study your history lessons? The Jews, they infiltrated the government, and then tried to weasel their way into power from within. But our veterans stopped and dead in their tracks and show them who's boss. I heard that a lot of Jews served in the army during the war. Yeah, a lot of it. They were just a bunch of paper-pushing gold bricks. Look at them here. They're lazy, shiftless, stupid, utterly worthless. They'll do anything to avoid doing real work. Eric, I just don't understand you anymore. What's gotten over you? You used to be such an exemplary person. Listen, fellas, I'm still the same old Eric. It just bothers me that a lot of the kids here look like they're starving. Well, whose fault is that? The Jews are allotted more than enough food. They can't help it if they won't feed their own kids. And besides, who cares? They're Jews, remember? Let them starve for all I care. Look, I don't like being here either, but the orders are orders. And we could find ourselves in places a lot worse. Like where, for instance? A concentration camp. What's wrong with concentration camps? Well, I heard rumors that there are really nasty things going on there. I believe those stories. Pure rubbish. My cousin was a guard at Dachau. He told me so long as the inmates followed the regulations and didn't make trouble, they were well treated. It's the same thing here. If the Jews behave themselves, nothing will happen to them. But they're always up to no good. Always testing us. Always trying to squeeze a favor out of you. <laughs> Utterly shameless and, and completely lacking in pride. They don't even protect their own kids. They disgust me. Where are you from, Fritz? From a, from a small town outside of Munich. Why do you ask? It just occurred to me that we really don't know that much about each other. Why is that important? We're here to do a job, period. Not to form a social club. I don't want to know anybody. After all, we're, we're SS men, not schoolboys. That's right, Hans. Imagine every Friday, the entire detachment retiring to town for tea like the Brits. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for some crumpets, my dear Eric? Why, uh, thank you, my dear sir. <laughs> oh, by the way, my dear boys, how many cities have we bombed this week? Yes. How many have they bombed out? Well, it doesn't matter because we'll teach those four mongers a lesson after we're through with the Ruskies. That's right, we sure will. And then we'll see who's laughing the loudest. I have an aunt who lives in Chicago. Really? Do you write to her? Not since the war started. She left Germany right after the last war. I think she married a Jewish guy. Oh, how could she do that? That's 
disgusting. Hey, Fritz, lay off, Harry. I can take care of myself, thank you. Fritz, you're an idiot. Oh, so now you're calling me names? Mm -hmm. You have an uncle who's a Jew, and now you have like, the nerve to get on my case? How dare you, Jew lover? No wonder you're soft on the Jews. Maybe you are a Jew. That's enough, fellas. If I were a Jew, so what? So what? Then you'd be the enemy, that's fine. Hey guys, cool it can already. Eric is no more a Jew than I am. Let's stop this talk now. He brought it up. I joined the SS when you, when you were still little kids. And being in the SS means more to me than anything, including my own family. And if anybody says anything that denigrates the oath we all took to serve the Fuhrer, then that makes him lord in the spit, and utterly undeserving of, of respect or trust. Yes, I took that oath, and I've been faithful to it to the letter, but that doesn't mean we have to be brutal. <laughs> oh boy, are you way off base? The Jews are being treated exactly the way they deserve, period. And if you feel differently, then maybe you should take it up with the Commandant. Hey, uh, let's not go that far. Hmm. The Jews are cunning. They will exploit any weakness. And that's why we have to be hard and strong. Otherwise, they will turn the table on us and kill us. Don't you understand that? What I see is a bunch of beaten down people who are struggling to stay alive. Yes, but whose fault is that, Eric? We didn't start this war. They and the Bolshevik cronies did. And if we don't deal with them now, Germany will be destroyed. The Jews are beaten down, you say. That's what the Jews want us to think. You see, they want to appeal to our sympathy in order to get us to let down our guard. But we can't afford to do that. Not for a second. The whole world is counting on us to keep the Jewish Bolshevik rabble out of Europe and break the, break the grip that the Jews have on the world. If we ease up on them before completing the job, the Jews will win and Germany will cease to exist. But we do give some of them breaks. Look at those rich Jews who live outside the ghetto. That's because they can be useful to us and we can keep a closer watch on them. The bottom line is this. The Jews are without a doubt or exception the lowest, most slippery, and the most untrustworthy race on the planet. Everything about them is sinister. Their gibberish language, their, their weird religious services, the way they dress, the way they speak, everything. They are foreign and evil and, and must be eliminated. They're the foreigners? Aren't we occupying their country? Poland was a rump state that rightfully, rightfully belongs to Germany. All we've done is take what was torn from us by those gentlemen at Versailles. Creating Poland was a joke that was played on Germany, but the joke is over. Well, the Poles seem to feel differently. Of course they do. An entire country was handed to them at Germany's expense. So why should they want to give it up? But they're lucky that we're here. Now we can take care of the Jewish problem for them. Do you know that they even let Jews serve in the army as commanders? Pathetic, isn't it? The Polish rabble proved beyond any doubt that they were completely incapable of governing themselves. If it wasn't for us, the Jews would be running roughshod over them, over us, over everybody. But we're putting an end to that. I hope you're right. I know. By the way, any word on when the, uh, the ball comes around and well, when the wall around the ghetto will be finished? I hope it's soon, because the Jews are getting more and more brazen with their smuggling. And no matter how much we find them, beat them and shoot them, they keep breaking the law. So what if they smuggle little food? So what? You want us to get killed? Eric, listen. We've got to stop this smuggling, because today it may be food, but tomorrow, it could be bombs or guns. And there are just a few of us and a lot of them. That's a laugh. Who the hell is going to smuggle arms to the Jews? Even the Poles want nothing to do with the Jews, so what's the very? Eric, my friend, you're a simpleton. Here we are trying to contain 400,000 Jews, none of whom has any love for us, and most of whom would just as soon see us dead. And you're asking why we have to control the smuggling. Then who's helping them? Partisan bandits. But I'm sure the Reichsfuhrer has a plan in mind that will solve that problem once and for all. He'll teach those Jews a lesson they will never forget. Watch. That's right. 
I'm sure the Reichsführer is putting together a plan that will destroy the Jewish threat for all time. I tell you this, any ass soldier who fails to do his job is committing treason. It's us or the Jews. We've got to stay strong. Does that include killing little kids and babies too? Hey, ding dong. Nobody's killed any kids. I have three kids of my own. What the hell's the problem with you anyway, Eric? Why are you so concerned about Jewish kids? This is exactly what I've been talking about. The Jews use their kids to appeal to our weakness. And we can't afford to respond to that. It's all a ploy on their part to get over on us. Well, screw them. They're lording over us after the war, after the, after the last war. Now it's our turn. Well, we were, we were doing all the dirty work and being taxed to the hill to pay off that outrageous indemnity to the, to the French and the English. The Jews were cleaning up like the bandits they are. All we wanted what is rightfully ours. The Fuhrer's right about the Jews. How they weasel their way into a country and then try to take it over. In Munich, there were loads of Jews who tried to pass themselves off as being German. But it was so phony. They dressed like Germans, spoke like Germans, waved the German flag, joined, social, joined the German social organizations and sent their kids to German schools. They even joined the Reichsfeuer. Reichsfeuer. But they were not Germans. No way. They weren't? Then what were they? They were infiltrators, saboteurs, degenerates, and pastors. Most of the criminal element was Jewish. All a bunch of gangsters and racketeers. And I don't need to tell you how they covered our women, do I? Well, there weren't too many Jews where I grew up, but the ones who were there, they were okay. That's the smoke screen to lull you into complacency. They have their secret, they have their secret networks, just like in the ghetto. Ordering the creation of the ghetto was the best thing the Reichsführer could have done. That way we could keep close watching them and prevent them from making trouble. A young man pushing a bucket and mop enters the room. He is handsome. A large Jewish star is affixed onto his jacket. The young man looks at the SS men and bows and doffs his cap. Excuse me, sirs. I have been assigned to clean, to clean this room. We told you a job. Make it snap. The Jew starts moving around chairs and mopping the room. As I say, these jewels must be carefully monitored so they don't make trouble. Don't you think it might be better to clam up while he's here? No, oh, why? We wouldn't want to give away any secrets now, would we? Oh, you're right. He's probably just by, so maybe it's better if, if we talk about that or something, eh? Oh, boy! The weather here sure stinks, doesn't it? So is it too cold or too hot? Well, today, today the weather's been okay. For a change. I wonder how the Jews are coping. Didn't we agree not to mention them while he's here? Hey, we're just talking about the weather, right? What's the big deal? Oh, maybe Eric is right. And maybe he doesn't seem to be listening. Okay, I'll be too careful with them. That's exactly when they're at their most dangerous. <laughs> hey, Joe, are you listening to us? No, sir. I'm just mopping. Okay, then. Just mind your own business. He's lying, of course, but why should we take chances? The Jew continues mopping. As he does, he moves closer to where the SS men are seated. I got a letter from my parents. So they moved in with my aunt. You know, they were bombed out a couple of months ago, and things have been rough for them ever since. Of stinking grits. They started the carpet bombing, not us. I heard Churchill's scientific advice as a Jew. It just shows you how deeply the Jewish infection has spread in Britain. Hey, you, Joe, come over here. Yes, sir. I said, come over here. Are you hard of hearing? The Jew walks over to where the SS men are seated. How come you Jews are such troublemakers? What the hell did we do to you to make you hate us so much? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Don't you play dummy with me, Jew? Remember, we had to you. So just tell the truth. Sir, please, I just want to do my job. You're playing stupid. Huh? What's up, yeshiva boy, huh? Hmm. How come all you Jews are so arrogant? You think you're better than us, but you're not. Not in the least. You smell. Your, your women are whores. Your whole religion is a fraud. You connive, you steal, you sabotage. You mock up the world. Please, sir, let me continue working. I have many more rooms to clear. 
stop it, Fritz. Are you coming to this Jew's defense? Is he a friend of yours? Fritz, enough already. Have your fun somewhere else. And why don't you be quiet? You're a Jew lover anyway. I don't even know why you're even in the SS. Hey, there's no kind of that kind of talk. No. See? See what you've done, you bastard? You've got us arguing. I bet, you makes that feel, I bet that makes you feel good, doesn't it? I said nothing, sir. How dare you contradict me? How dare you? You stinking parasite! You filthy lump of clay! You shameless whoremonger, you lecherous bastard! I'm going to teach you a lesson you'll never forget! Fritz stands up, grabs his truncheon, and attempts to hit the Jew on his head. Fritz misses, but with a follow-up swing, hits the Jew hard on the upper arm. The Jew falls backwards onto a chair. He's holding his arm in his loudly, loudly moaning in pain. Bastard, I'll finish you off now! Fritz is about to hit the Jew again when a young woman enters the room. She is a nurse. She is young, pretty, in her early 20s. She is annoyed. What's going on here? Nothing's faster. The Jew is causing trouble, that's all. Trudeau, there's nothing to worry about. You know her? We met before. We're just friends. Disturbances are not permitted here, gentlemen. If this happens again, I will report your behavior to your superiors. Is that clear? We're sorry, Trudeau. Cannot talk, you. You have no cause for concern, Shvesta. The Jew is causing trouble. Instead of complaining, you should be thanking us for protecting you from the likes of him. Yes, a nice warm thank you would do the trick indeed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What would your mother say? If she knew about this. All right. Now we have a mama's boy here. Next thing I'll be hearing is that we're converting with the Jews. You know that some Jews are so cunning they'll even try to pass themselves off as Aryan. Some even try to join the SS. You want to check me out? I'll show you what they got right now. Keep your pants on. Both you guys are fruitcakes. True though, really, and nothing has happened here. The Jews start moaning louder. He tries to get up, but can't, and collapses back onto the chair. Serves him right. Shouldn't have made trouble. Are you all right? The Jew winces in pain, but doesn't reply. What did you do to him? Nothing, really. I hit him with my trunch. I was doing my duty. Schweister, it's just part of a day's work. I was minding my business, Schweister. I'm doing my work when they start up with me. Shut up, Jew! Nobody asked you! So Jew is lying. Schwester, he was causing trouble. Are you, going, are you going to believe me or this Jew? I don't know who to believe and I don't care. All I know is that there's been a commotion and you will have to come back some other time. Come back? I've been waiting here an hour to see the doctor. Oh, let's get out of here. This place is beginning to smell. How many Jew lovers? Excuse me, sir. My father is a colonel in the Wehrmacht, so I would appreciate it if you watch what you say. I don't care if your father is the Reichsmarschall himself. I still think you're a Jew lover. Pamper a Jew and the next thing he's stealing your job. Or maybe even a woman's virtue. How dare you! Please leave now. This matter will be reported to your commandant. Now see what you've done? You've gotten us all into trouble, stupid. Who cares? Let us go, go she finds. Let's go and get a drink. I gotta get out of here. Trudeau, I really need to see the doctor. You should have thought of that before you made trouble. I didn't do anything. Ah, oh, stop your complaining already. We'll be back later. Let's go, fellas. Leaving her alone with this Jew is revolting. Now I really need a drink. I won't forget you, you hear, damn Jew, huh? The Fuhrer was absolutely right when he warned us about you. You are vermin. You are everything I can't stand. What did the German people to deserve the likes of you, huh? Hmm. Even now you look down on us, laugh at us, mock us, and then you wonder why we hate you. And you want to get rid of, and you wonder why we want to get rid of all of you. Nothing's too low for you. You even use your little kids to raise favors from us. Appealing to our sense of humanity for a bit of food when, it, when in fact you waste and hoard or sell everything we give you. Now our cities are being bombed by countries that you've bamboos, bamboozled into fighting for you. How do you people do it? How do you work this kind of magic? You're pure evil. We would have won the last war if it wasn't for the likes of you. 
You stand us in the back, ruin our economy, try to suck us dry, and then you have the nerve to claim that you are being victimized when, when, when we are victims. Not you. You have the problem, but now we have the solution to remove the problem once and all and make the world a much better place. No thanks to you. Let's go. The SS men leave. Let me look at your arm. I won't hurt you, I promise. What's your name? Jacob. My name is Trudeau. I'm the nurse in charge. I don't know why they want to beat me. I was just doing what I was told to do. And if I don't finish, then I'm going to be in big trouble. Jacob tries to get up, but slumps back onto the chair, in pain. Now, I'm in real trouble. Don't worry. Now just try to relax while I look at your arm. Why are you being so nice to me? I have my reasons. If I can't work, it's all over for me and for my family. Who do you live with? My parents and younger sister. We're sharing an apartment with three other families. We barely have enough food now, and if I can't work, then I don't know how we'll survive. Doesn't the council distribute food? Yes, for a price. That's outrageous. I didn't know that. Well, that's the way it is. <coughs> Nothing's for free. You drummers sure know how to play people off against each other. Listen, Jacob, I have nothing to do with that. No disrespect, <coughs> Buster, but you are German, aren't you? Yes, I am. But that doesn't mean we all hate Jews. Oh, so you are one, one, you're one of those good Germans. I don't know what that means, a good German. But if it will make you feel better, then yes. I am a good German. You know, of course, that helping a Jew can get you into a lot of trouble. Who said anything about helping a Jew? I'm just treating a man who's been injured. Oh, so you don't acknowledge that I am a man? That's reassuring. Well, aren't you? According to your fewer, I am subhuman, vermin, meant to be squashed and discarded. Don't you agree with your fewer? On some things he is right. On others, well, I'm not so sure. I like your Schwester. So, let me tell you. Talk like that can get you into a lot of trouble. Are you going to inform on me? That's not funny. You must be, you must be more careful. Why, Jacob, you seem to care about me. You seem nice for a German. Tell me about yourself. Well, I grew up in Warsaw. Went to public school, and after I graduated from the high school, I attended two years of secondary school, specializing in accounting. My father owned a clothing store, and when I was off from school, I would work for him. Then, in 38, I found myself in the Polish army. Why did you join the army? I didn't exactly join. I was drafted. And then what happened? Things were quiet for a while. Then, the war broke out, and before we knew it, we were surrounded by, Ger by the German army. I was taken prisoner, and after the Germans found out I was Jewish, they dumped me into the ghetto. And I've been scrounging ever since to survive. Were you an officer? No. I was a senior sergeant in the infantry regiment. My commanding officer was Jewish. After we surrendered, he was taken away with all the other officers. And I never stopped him again. That sounds so cruel. Trusta, it's war. And in war, nothing is fair. In fact, you and I are at war. Technically, we are enemies. Well, I don't feel that way at all. At least not about you. You've been quite kind to me. I'm doing... I'm going to do what I can to help you. I have connections. Please, Trusta, Trudeau. You have done more than enough for me. Just by being kind to me, you have done much more than you'll ever know. But Jacob, you need medical care. And your family needs help too. I can't ignore that. Trudeau, I don't make trouble for you. No trouble <coughs> at all. 
Now, why don't you be a good boy and relax so I can try to fix up your arm? Jacob and Trudeau look into each other's faces and smile. Their hands touch. Lights fade, end of scene one.